So we've got a 2,000 kilogram car. It's accelerating from rest to 60 miles per hour. Uh, and it, we've got a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.95. So what is the maximum possible force of friction? And given that maximum force of friction, what is the maximum acceleration? And if you've got A, just go F equals MA and solve for A. And then uh, part C, how much time will it take to go from 0 to 60? And that's a fairly standard measure of how quick cars are, is how, how quickly they go from 0 to 60 miles per hour. So let's, feel, um, so I drew a little picture of what's given and find, well, we want the maximum force of, and it's, remember it's static friction that accelerates a car or decelerates a car. The static friction between your wheels and the road. Even though the car is moving, the surface between the wheel and the road is not sliding, it's static. And so, so for part B, uh, what is the acceleration? And then for part C, how much time does it go from 0 to 60? So let's solve for part A. <clears throat> well, we want the force of friction. That's going to be equal to mu times the normal force. Now let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of the car. gravity pulling it down, the normal force on the wheels uh, from the ground uh, to the wheels is pushing up, really supporting that weight. And then we've got a static friction force uh, pushing it to the right. So we'll call this the x direction and this the y direction. Now if we sum the forces in the y direction, we can see that the normal force is just supporting the weight here. And that's, at, that, at this point, we've done this so, so long now, I'm just going to say that's good enough. You can say, okay, the normal force, in this case, the normal force is just equal to the weight. Plug in your values. with units. And you get 18,620 newtons. That's your answer for part A. For part B, if I sum the forces in the x direction, I get MA in the x direction. Well, there's only one force in the x direction, and that's that force of friction equals MA. So A equals the force of friction divided by the mass. So we get A is equal to the force of friction uh, divided by the mass. And when you do the arithmetic, you get 9.31, just a little less than 9.8. And then uh, we want uh, for part C. Well, what do we know? We know the acceleration. We know the initial velocity and the final velocity, and we want time. So what has those four things in it? The first kinematic equation. So solve for time. Now, uh, the final velocity is 60 miles per hour, but you can do the uh, 
conversion. It's actually that's actually 26.82 meters per second, and it started from rest, and we accelerated at 9.31 meters per second squared. And 2.88 seconds. Now that's quick, very, very quick. But it's not the quickest. <laughs> uh, there, I mean, if you had a car that it could accelerate like this, um, that would be a, a supercar, OK? Uh, now, uh, Tesla just came out with the Roadster 2, right? Um, and supposedly it has a, a 0 to 60 in uh, 1.9 seconds. Now, which makes me wonder how they do that because uh, it's, it seems to me they're, uh, they must have special tires or something because the coefficient of friction um, must be greater than one between the tires and the road because I think, uh, well, we could do the arithmetic for that, but I think they would be accelerating um, at a rate greater than the acceleration of gravity, which is amazing. Uh, you would feel your own weight getting pushed back in the car, in, on your seat. So um, that's, that would be uh, uh, pretty cool. But Anyway, um, that's how you solve a problem like this involving this. Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. Remember uh, that it is static friction between the wheels and the road that makes a car accelerate. There's no applied force or anything like that. Um, do it. Now, I mean, if you, had, if you were towing a car, that's different, right? But if it's the engine of the car that's accelerating or the brakes that are making it decelerate or whatever, those are um, friction forces that are causing the change in motion. Um, so friction doesn't always slow you down. Sometimes friction, well, a lot of half, about half the time friction speeds you up. When you're walking and, you're, and you accelerate forward, it's the friction between your feet and the, and the ground that's accelerating you forward. And then it's friction that slows you down. So a world without friction would be dangerous. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to go anywhere. <laughs> all right. That is all.